Ireland has so many amazing wildlife habitats, all of them home to lots of bird life. Being at the edge of the North Atlantic also means we're a welcome stopping off point for birds on long migrations. But recently, we've been seeing enormous reductions in bird numbers, both those that breed here and those that visit for the winter. As more and more birds disappear from our skies, the number of endangered and critically endangered species is rapidly growing. With water birds alone down almost 40% in the last 20 years. So what is happening to our birds? What's driving these devastating population losses? And what, if anything, can be done to reverse the declines? Accessible only by ferry, Cape Clear is the most southerly point in Ireland. An island only three miles long and a mile wide. Situated in the middle of Roaring Water Bay. A place little more than a hundred people call home. People have been coming here for 5,000 years. And because the island is so close to the continental shelf, the waters around Cape Clear welcome whales, leatherback turtles, and even sharks. But it's most famous for the thousands of visitors that arrive each year from Africa, the Americas, and even the Arctic. It's the 60th anniversary of Ireland's longest running permanent bird observatory here on Cape Clear. That also means 60 years of recorded bird sightings and 60 years of daily logs. I'm meeting Steve Wing, the Chief Wildlife Officer on Cape Clear, to see what trends have been observed in his 20 years on the island. Steve's work on the island is all about gathering data on how populations of birds that pass by here are faring. A lot of this data depends on bird ringing, and Steve's invited me along to see how it's done. I know instantly by just a few feathers that this was born this year. Oh really? How yeah. do you know that? It's got little grey grey feathers on its head, yeah. which are juvenile feathers, and the okay. blue, blue are adult. And you can see there's a few little, ye little yellow feathers on its cheeks yeah. and on its forehead. Wow, the so yellow it, is it, really it, it, it's a juvenile. yellow. Yeah. So when you put the ring on, you half close the ring. Yeah. This is an opportunity not just to ring the birds for future identification, but also to measure their weight and determine what age they are. A bit like an impromptu health check. It's 10.3 grams. 10.3 grams. Mm. Wow. Want to let this one go? Yes. It takes ornithologists like Steve years of practice to learn this procedure. And it's an honour for me to be the one to release this little fellow back into the skies. You're probably going to fly away straight away. Yeah, I see. Straight into the bush. Yeah. And she will go looking for a kind of little green fly aphids, little insects, right? Bird watchers flock to Cape Clear from all over Europe catch sight of bird life and report their findings. It's these sightings that help Steve and the team here to build up a database of bird populations. September and October we're very busy, and that's important. So it's a collective effort I'll to get so, yeah. all that data I'll, in year very round, so. year very in, year so. out. Yeah, yeah, very much so. That gives us a huge database and hopefully use that information to push governments into making the right decisions, right policies. Keen to meet some of these bird watchers, Steve told me about a group about to take the next generation of birders on a nature walk. 
so I set off across the island to meet them. Oh, hi. It's a wildlife walk. It is. Would you Excellent. like to join us? I would love to join you. Thank you. Yeah. What have you got here? Wildlife bingo. Wildlife bingo, yes. Yeah. So we just have a little checklist of things that we're going to try to see along the walk. <laughs> Neve Fitzgerald of Birdwatch Ireland is leading the nature walk where the kids first learn how to identify different bird species. There's a, a couple of great blackback gulls on the lake to look at. They're, they're like big white gulls, but they've got quite uh, solid black on their back. They look quite similar to herring gulls uh, when you can't see them side by side, but they're actually quite a lot bigger. And their wingspan is like four foot. It's, it's quite hard when you start using them to, to pick out things. The, the bigger binoculars are, the more they shake. And why is it important to get children out at a young age looking at nature and observing? We really, we've disconnected with nature a bit. Um, so organisations like Birdwatch Ireland, a big uh, focus of theirs is to try to get people reconnected and recognising everything that's out there, the beauty that we have and all the like simple everyday things that we come across. It's important, I think, as humans to, to be reminded that it's not just us here on this planet. I think that's part of why it's important to show the variation and teach that to kids. And what kind of things does that data tell you then? What's the, the point of that information? Initially, it gives us a population level. And we can, certainly for the, breed, the, the resident birds and the migrants that come in and breed, and we can see year on year whether the population is increasing or decreasing. What happens here? you can sort of extrapolate so we can see because it generally happens across the whole of Ireland and then what happens in Ireland generally happens across Europe. So. so the information that's collected here from Cape Clear is mixed in with the information from other bird observatories yes, yeah. everywhere? Yes, yeah, yeah. To give yeah, us a bigger yeah. picture? It's like a jigsaw, you know, if you have one piece of a jigsaw it means nothing. Mm. But once you get all the little pieces together you get a lovely big picture. Yeah. What's it told you about specific species of birds? There are examples here of, uh, say, curlew which have plummeted, sadly. And the, the islanders will tell you this, that they've, they've noticed this, the, the, okay. the, the, the residents on the island. And you can see it's just down, down, curly way down. If lots of different species are showing declines here, what does that tell us about the health of the natural environment? That it's failing. Yeah, that, uh, we're, we're doing something wrong and we need to open our eyes and see what's happening. It's an alarm call. It's an alarm call. Yep. 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 Right, any counts on four moves? Uh, Fifteen, South Harbour. Tell Duck, Widgeon, Teal, Mallard. Every day's bird watching on Cape Clear culminates in the calling of the log, where experienced bird watchers register their sightings for that day. Dawn Petrol, Gannett. This daily routine has provided a wealth of information on bird populations here on the island. Can I more than three? It's wonderful to see all these birders coming here from far and wide, collecting up all the data that informs us about the health of the bird populations. But I do have to wonder, what will this daily log look like in 10 years' time or 20 years' time, even in 60 years' time? is so far removed from the pressures facing Ireland's wildlife, from intensive agriculture and intensive sprawl. And yet even there, bird numbers are falling. This begs an obvious question. What does this mean for the rest of Ireland? To find out what's driving the declines, I'm in Ladies Island Lake in Wexford to meet with Brian Burke, one of the authors of two recent studies that help us to better understand the challenges we are facing. Brian, hello. 
Hi, hey, Anya. How are you? Not so bad. How are you doing? Good. Are you finding anything much out there today? Yeah, there's a few bits around. It's, it's a good time of year and a good site for it, so, you know. What did you find then in these reports? When this first survey first started in, in the mid-1990s, we had around 1.25 million waterbirds in Ireland every winter. Um, when we analysed the most recent couple of years, we have around 750,000. So that's a decline of half a million waterbirds in less than 20 years in Ireland. Half a million waterbirds fewer than what we had less than 20 years ago. Yeah, so even we were quite surprised. We do see, we have seen declines every time we do this analysis, but just the scale of it is really, really alarming. And what kind of bird species are we speaking about specifically? So we're talking about wildfowl, which is your ducks, um, your swans and your geese. And we're also talking about waders, which are the kind of long-legged birds. A lot of people would be familiar with the likes of curlew, lapwing, and there's also different species of sandpiper uh, and stuff like that. So in total, there's around 45 species of water bird that use coastal wetlands and inland wetlands all over the country. 68% of the most commonly occurring birds are now red or orange listed. There's a 40% decline in wintering birds. 11 out of 12 wader species are in decline. And birds like the curlew and the corncrake are on the edge of extinction. Once you, you lose a species like that from a country like Ireland, it's really, really difficult to ever get them back. So um, it's much easier and much better if we just do what we can to, to save them, you know, before it's too late. And what's caused such drastic declines across so many different species of birds? Uh, it's a big question and it's, it's quite complex when people ask that. Um, they're kind of nearly hoping that there's one single answer and maybe one thing that we can fix. And it's kind of death by a thousand cuts in that there's little things chipping away at their habitat all throughout their range. And it's essentially just making life harder for water birds. And here in Ireland, what kind of things are, are driving that habitat loss? Um, so yeah, habitat loss kind of comes in a lot of forms and it's not just someone coming in and completely destroying a wetland. Some of it is just chipping away at the edges of the wetlands. You know, agriculture with technology and with money and everything, we're you know, much better at exploiting the land, but unfortunately um, that can be at a cost to the, the natural ecosystems in the background. It's essentially when, when things are done badly. So a lot of stuff, agricultural intensification, um, flood management, forestry, they're not necessarily bad things, but when they're done in a certain way, they can be very, very damaging. And the idea that we are losing bird species so drastically, that's not just confined to the birds, is it? They are indicators of the health. Yeah, so birds would be uh, a lot of the time at the top of the kind of the food chain or at the top of the ecosystem. But they're, you know, showing us what's going on with the insects, with the mammals, with the plants, with all the, the complex biodiversity underneath them. So it's not just birds, it's everything else as well. Over the past 40 years, drastic changes to the way we manage our farms, forests and bogs have caused unprecedented biodiversity loss and now there are new pressures on the horizon. What can be done to help wildlife survive and to help bird populations to recover? <laughs>